Sick of TV and its cultural rot? Tune in to churchmilitant.tv and become a premium subscriber, where you will get access to fresh shows with solid church doctrine. As a premium subscriber, you'll get hundreds of hours of programming, which includes investigative shows, catechesis, apologetics, church history lessons, and a lot more. What are you waiting for? Forget the bad television and dive into the riches of the Catholic faith for only $10 a month. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. An interesting article appeared in a recent online edition of the National Catholic Register. That's the good paper, by the way, not the bad one with a similar-sounding name, the National Catholic Reporter, lovingly referred to as the National Catholic Distorter. In the National Catholic Register, we've attached the link, is an interview with Boston's Cardinal Sean O'Malley. The interview was done in concert with the March for Life in D.C. a couple weeks back. But while the interview is good, the part we're talking about that is interesting is the comm box and the particular comments left there. While the Cardinal talks about his love for the pro-life cause and his great support for it, the comments suggest something else entirely. They say everything except come right out and call the Cardinal a hypocrite for talking about pro-life issues, but what they see as doing things totally contrary to those issues. Now, this vortex is not about whether the Cardinal says one thing and does another. It's about the perception, got that? It's about the perception that has been created in the minds of faithful Catholics that he does in fact say one thing and do another. It seems, for example, that the funeral of Ted Kennedy is still stuck in the craw of many faithful Catholics in the Boston area, not to mention other areas around the country, that Cardinal O'Malley allowed such a public spectacle of praise and adoration at Kennedy's funeral mass for such a turncoat Catholic is something it seems will follow his eminence to his grave as long as he refuses to admit it was imprudent and in hindsight he should not have permitted it. But like we said, this isn't about Cardinal O'Malley per se. The same could be echoed about New York's Timothy Cardinal Dolan. There is no end to the amount of scandal that was caused and is still being talked about in the hearts and minds of faithful Catholics when he not only invited but then defended his invitation to Obama for the Al Smith dinner and gave the pro-abortion president his much desired and by now famous photo op. When church leaders do these sorts of things they lose the trust of the faithful as evidenced in the comment box and quite frankly there aren't that many faithful left to lose the trust of. They create division among the few Catholics left. In the minds of many, they've come to be seen as dividers, plain and simple. That's the label they get, and then it's game over. Many come to see them as incapable of being trusted, so they wind up ignoring them and wait for their replacement to come in five or ten years. Now, being a divider isn't a bad thing in and of itself. It depends what the issue is that's causing division. In fact, our blessed Lord on the last day will be what we could easily call the great divider when he separates the sheep from the goats, divides the elect from the damned. Christianity, Catholicism, has always been about dividing, dividing us, each person, from, him, from his sinful self, dividing light and darkness, and on and on. So being a divider is kind of a neutral proposition until you see it in context. In the case of some church leaders in this context, you have to ask, what is the point of causing this division? Why create a maelstrom over celebrating such a public enemy of the church as Ted Kennedy? Why create a scandal that stirred hundreds of thousands of Catholics to cry out in protest over Obama at the Al Smith dinner? What's to be gained by these actions? No one would have been led into sin or incorrect thinking had Kennedy's funeral been private. No one would have left the church or fallen from grace if Obama had not been invited. And moreover, what about the great damage done to the faithful, who once again have to sit back and wonder and question and doubt the qualities of their leaders' judgments? Sure, these moves may make a cardinal or two the toast of the town in the secular world, but a continual refusal to take into account the sheep eventually causes the sheep to doubt the shepherd's voice. This is what needs to be realized. To borrow some vocabulary from the world of politics, they are not sufficiently playing to their base, and that is the number one rule of politics, keep the base happy. Not that a cardinal or an archbishop should make his choices based on people liking him, but 
wouldn't it be smart and prudent and demonstrate superb wisdom to stop and consider that if a certain decision is made and it's a safe bet that the base will be really scandalized by it, wouldn't it be good to go back to square one and examine that, ask why the faithful could be hurt, and then perhaps rethink it? But this never seems to happen. Even Cardinal Dolan's follow-up response to the massive outcry against his decision didn't so much demonstrate a reconsideration of his original decision to invite the baby killer-in-chief, but just a somewhat poorly thought-out defense. Again, the question needs to be asked, why are these decisions being made? What are the criteria? What is the upside of offending so many faithful Catholics in exchange for what? And most importantly, do they realize the damage they're doing to themselves and their own reputations when they make appeals to the faithful to back them on other things? No one wants to follow after a weak leader, and rightly or wrongly, in the common mind, compromise equals weakness. And from there, it's only one small step to ineptitude in the public's mind. The church will never be able to be the herald of the gospel if her leaders are perceived by the faithful as weak, lacking boldness, and too easily compromising. It flies in the face of everything we know as Catholics. We have a panoply of giants in the spiritual life, saints from every age and culture, martyrs, bishops, and so forth, none of whom were ever or have ever been perceived as being weak or compromising, quite the contrary. In fact, it is the fact that they were not these things, that they have joined the ranks of the saints and enjoy eternal bliss with the rest of the company of saints and angels. What Catholics want in their leaders, because we need it, is a talk the talk and walk the walk, take no prisoners approach that we can all rally around. Not the continual dialoguing, word parsing, legally say one thing, do another kind of approach. Heaven isn't that complicated and nuanced and neither is getting there. It isn't easy, the road is narrow, but it is never compromised and it is always brilliantly clear. This is what the Catholic base needs to hear and be encouraged to live like. Absent this in our leaders, Catholic identity becomes obscured and Catholic life has a cloud hanging over it. Stop cavorting so much with the world that is happy to use you temporarily, but actually hates you, and start paying attention to your sheep who need you. God love you. I'm Michael Voris. Tired of being discouraged and disheartened by the culture? Does your spiritual life need some fresh air? Well, how about fresh air for your soul? and an ocean breeze for the body. Join Michael Voris and Father Z of the world-renowned Catholic blog, What Does the Prayer Really Say?, on a Lenten retreat at sea. This seven-day trip is the perfect opportunity for couples and singles to strengthen their faith and clear their minds. Find out more by clicking on the attached link or call 805-526-6565. Also, be sure to check out our Facebook event page where those who already signed up can introduce themselves.